Hello and welcome to Tech Latest by Nikkei Asia, where we bring you the freshest updates from the technology sector in Asia. Every episode, one of our reporters from the region will be filling us in on the tech news on their radar, from semiconductors in China to space travel in Japan to startups in Indonesia. From Nikkei Asia's Tokyo headquarters, I'm Alice French. In this episode, I'm chatting to Kenji Kawase, our chief business news correspondent in Hong Kong, about renewed geopolitical tensions that have emerged in the tech sector this week and the impact they're having on Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC. Hi, Kenji. Always a pleasure to have you on. Hi, Alice. Uh, thanks for having me today. Okay, so in this week's episode, we're focusing on the renewed geopolitical tensions surrounding the tech sector. And I understand that Morris Chang, the 92-year-old founder of Taiwan Semiconductor Company, or TSMC as it's known, made some pretty sobering comments at an event in Taiwan at the weekend. Um, you know, first of all, well, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are aware of who Morris Chan is, but uh, just to recap, uh, he founded TSMC in 1987 after establishing his career in the semiconductor industry, mostly in Texas Instruments. And he led TSMC to be the global leader in chip foundry and uh, hence laid the foundation of Taiwan as a global leader in the global chip industry. Um, he has retired five years ago, but he is still highly respected, uh, not only in the, uh, the tech industry, chip industry, but in a wider Taiwanese society. And uh, what he said on Saturday uh, at the TSMC's annual Sports Day event was that, uh, open quote, in the semiconductor space, there is no globalization anymore. There is no free trade anymore, end quote. And he also said, the priority is national security only. I see this global competition going on. Since these words came from Chang, who is uh, like the godfather of the tech industry, and uh, the tone was pretty clear and gloomy. Um, and uh, this came as uh, we are witnessing a further widening of geopolitical rifts. The outbreak of the Israeli Hamas war has only added another layer to the US China tensions and deepened cracks in the already fragile geopolitical landscape. We just saw uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping hosting an event commemorating the 10th anniversary of his pet project, the Belt and Road Initiative in Beijing, where Russian President Vladimir Putin was among the leaders there. And then those leaders were most coming, most of them coming from non-Western countries. And you know, Xi Jinping and uh, Putin, they were, uh, they went further to say that they're going to enhance this intimate and effective cooperation, which they have uh, uh, significantly broadened as Moscow uh, invaded Ukraine and uh, Beijing implicitly supported uh, that. And meanwhile, you know, US President Joe Biden was in Tel Aviv just when Xi Jinping and Putin was uh, shaking hands and patting each other's shoulders in Beijing. And you know, Biden's visit was another sign of U.S. support of Israel, where China and Russia seem to be standing on the other side of this conflict. OK, so like you say, we can definitely see signs of those divisions deepening across the global tech sector and just across geopolitics as a whole. But there were some signs of optimism from Chang, right? What did he say about Japan's semiconductor industry, for example? Yes, uh, Mr. Chang made some positive remarks about the outlook of the chip industry. Actually, it was a, uh, when he was answering questions from our Taipei colleague, Annie, um, on which, where she asked uh, which region will have the best chance to emerge as a winner under this kind of uh, uh, condition in the, in the chip sector. And uh, Mr. Chang singled out Japan and Singapore. Um, and with regard to Japan, where well, TSMC is building a factory uh, in Kyushu now, spending $8 billion, um, and is planning another one, a much more sophisticated one. Uh, Mr. Chang said, uh, open quote, the working culture in Japan is also very good, end quote. This comment came uh, from uh, his past experience at TI, 
uh, as he was recalling the positive interactions he had with the uh, with the with the Japanese um, five decades ago, uh, when he was helping the uh, to open TI's uh, chip packaging and assembly facility in Kyushu, the same place. And uh, he also said uh, Kyushu is a nice place because there's an abundant supply of water and electricity. Okay, and just to add some context to Chang's comments, he made those just after Nikkei Asia had found out about the fact that TSMC is seeking permanent permission to ship chip making tools from the US to its plant in Nanjing in China. So the company really seems to be worried about rising hostility between Washington and Beijing amid the tech crackdown, right? Yes, you're right. Um, well, you know, having a uh, chip plant uh, in Nanjing. It doesn't mean that they could just do whatever they want. Um, TSMC need to acquire a license from the U.S. government called the uh, the Validated End User Authorization, or VEU in short. You know, this VEU authorizations have existed since 2007, but according to what TSMC said, there was no need for them to apply for it in the past. But now they do. They received an advice from the U.S. authorities to apply for this, uh, meaning that TSMC will be authorized to continue operating uh, in Nanjing. TSMC's Nanjing plant, uh, they make uh, mostly 12 nanometers and 16 nanometer chips, which are considered to be on the same technology level as 14 nanometer grade and that is what u.s government started restricting and uh so you know washington's uh export control is not only for the u.s uh makers of chip machines also uh goes on to cover uh the taiwanese company other companies like tsmc from uh, uh prohibiting the chinese to be acquiring this uh top-notch technology Right, so the US crackdown is an ongoing challenge for TSMC, but does the company have reason to worry? We know, as you mentioned, that diplomatic tensions are very high, exacerbated by the Israel-Hamas war, but are we expecting the US to crack down even further on tech exports to China from now on? Yeah, um, the it was just, I think it was Tuesday US time that the, uh, the US Commerce Department slapped a, a new round of uh, export restrictions to curb China's access to advanced AI chips and uh, cutting edge uh, chip production equipment for that. This came uh, after the Huawei uh, announcing uh, the 5G capable smartphone, which was a big surprise. And uh, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said, the fact is China, even after the update of these rules, will import hundreds of billions of dollars of semiconductors from the United States. And so, the uh, even though this new restriction was just announced in order to to control or in order to stop the the technology to go to China's military development, Raimondo also said that uh, this kind of uh, uh, new rules or updating of these new rules uh, will uh, happen at least annually. So this will be an ongoing process of uh, tighter control of uh, chip technology. Uh, to China. So that is uh, what TSMC, uh, who is in the middle of this, uh, is always have to be, be worried about. Well, thank you so much for giving us the rundown on that story. Just before we go, though, are there any other stories that you'd like to recommend to listeners this week? Yes, um, there is an interesting story uh, from Japan on this uh, new wood-based manufacturing material. Um, which is uh, supposedly five times stronger than steel, but weighs only a fifth of a uh, piece of steel. Uh, the material is called cellulose nanofiber, or CNF, um, which is basically a piece of wood broken down into nano level and molded into various shapes by mixing it with, uh, with a type of plastic. And actually there's a nice and informative video uh, over 10 minutes, uh, but you don't feel it really long for this story. So uh, I wish uh, uh, you would learn more about this uh, by watching this video uh, on our website. Yeah, I can definitely second that. I would recommend any listeners to go and check out that video on our website, perhaps over the weekend. 
Okay, well, thank you so much, Kenji. It's been great to catch up with you, and I hope that we can speak again soon. Thank you very much. That's all for this episode. You can read more of Kenji's reporting, along with a host of other stories about Asia's tech industry, on Nikkei Asia's website, asia.nikkei.com. And if you like what you hear, why not subscribe to our weekly Tech Asia newsletter, which will be delivered to your inbox every Thursday. There's a link to sign up in the show notes. And check back in next time for more updates on the tech trends.